Hi, and welcome back to R for Burpose. I'm Jennifer, your instructor for this tutorial series. Now we are in the second video of a three-part video segment on association rule mining, aka market basket analysis. We just read our article and cleaned our data file. Now we're going to implement the a priori algorithm. So let's hop back on over to R. I haven't closed my R session from the last video, so I already have um, my clean data file in the R console. What we want to do now is install install.packages the A rules package. So install the A rules package. And I learned my lesson from last time. I've already installed the package, so I'm not going to press enter now, but if you don't already have this package installed, go ahead and type this line of code and press enter. I don't want to risk it taking a long time to load though, so I'm just going to delete that and then call that package out of the library. So library parentheses a rules. And now our library is in the R console. So the algorithm that we're working with for this market basket analysis association rule mining is called a priori. So a pri a a pri a pri a priori and we're just going to call that function a priori on our data file c cg17 underscore dm and let's set this command to an object called a all right so it worked let me make this a little bigger so this is the a priori algorithm these are the default parameters so in just a second we'll jump over to the um to the a rules package and kind of look at the default options so by default it sets the confidence to 0 0.8 the minimal minimum value to 0.1 s max to one all right um Original support, it maintains the original support, but the default support is 0 0.1. The minimum length for the, the association rule on the item set is 1. So that means you could have, because if you remember, an association rule is something on the left-hand side, then an arrow, something on the right-hand side. So if your minimum length is 1, then you could have an, an empty side, then an arrow, than an item, or you could have an item, then an arrow, then an empty side. So the default is one. We're actually going to change that default to two. Um, the default for the maximum length is 10. We have 15, 15 health, 14 health variables in our data set. Um, so we're going to increase this max length to 10. They set the target to association rules, which is what we'll be working with, but you could also change that target to frequent item sets if you just wanted to look for co-occurrences of items together and not necessarily rules. All right, so this command produced um, how many results? Yeah, so <laughs> this command produced 436,170 rules. So 400,000 rules. Let's inspect them. Inspect A. That's our a priori on our data file. Inspect A. And there are a lot of rules. So actually, this, this might take a minute. All right, while that's loading. Let's take a look at the A rules package. So let's go to the a priori command. Mm, a priori. Mining associations with a priori. So mine frequent item sets, association rules, or association hyper edges with the a priori algorithm. Employs a level wise search for frequent item sets. All right. And um, so you know the arguments of the data. We can set our parameters, appearance, and control using using um, these subcommands: AP parameter, AP appearance, and AP control. So let's look at AP parameter. Mm, ASP. Where did it go? Yeah. So 
that looks like a s parameter i want it a p parameter maybe it's up here mm. AS parameter. I'm lost. Let's 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 reset. Okay. So go back to a priori. A priori. And then go to this AP parameter. And it should just all right, assuming this is the right one. So we can set our target to frequent item sets, you know, maximally frequent, close frequent, rules or hyper edges. Um, we're going to keep our keep our parameter to the rules target, um, which is the default option. We can specify the confidence level, which will change to 0 0.5 because that's what they did in the N. Haynes paper. Um, and we're going to set some some other specifications as well. And I'm a little bit lost in the PDF file, but but I have the code already written out, so you can go back and refer to it later. All right, let's check on R. It's still, wow, it's still loading. You know, this is really too many rules. So the reason why we want to set some specifications on this algorithm is because, you know, if we run this and we end up with 300, four, 436,000 rules, we can't really do anything with that. Right, it's way too big to inspect. It just finished, um, and the reason why I ran that is because one, I wanted to show you that it takes a long time, and also that, well, one, what, what does the output look like? So this is the association rule. All of this stuff on the left-hand side of the arrow, um, if these things are occurring, that is likely to also occur with these things on the right-hand side of the arrow, and this is. This is the count. So this association rule occurred 5,901 5, times across our data set. And these, these three numbers, one is the support, one is the confidence. Let's see if we can see which is which. Or well, we're going to have to scroll really far to find out which one is which. But we'll figure that out uh, when we run the code again with some specifications. But the thing I really wanted to show you here is that in this association rule, the result gives you variables um, even where the response option is set to zero. So we talked about association rule mining. You can look at things that occur together with things that don't occur together, so response options one and zero. But with market basket analysis, you only want to look for things that actually do occur together. So we'll end up resetting, resetting this so that only only our variables equal one because we don't care about things that are not occurring we only want to look for things that are occurring together all right so anyway we ran the a priori algorithm we inspected it without any control set um, now we want to set some controls some parameters on it so as i described we'll set this to a1 for the next a priori um, the command is a priori. Our data set is California Girl 17 underscore DM. Mm, our parameter, we have several parameters which we want to specify. So we put them in a list. We want the confidence to equal 0 0.5 because the default is now 0 0.8. We want the min len to equal 2 so that we don't have one side of the arrow empty. Mm, Max len equals, in my notes, I have it as 16. Actually, I believe we have 15 variables total, um, 15 variables total, 14 health variables. So at most, we would want it to be 15. I don't know why I put 16. Um, so max len is 15. Max time, max time equals zero. This just specifies um, if it's taking too long to load, just let it, finish running that command. Don't set a time limit on the command. And then the target, I wonder if you can see this with the video. Let me make that shorter. So the target equals rules. And then close that parentheses. So now we have an association rule with some different parameters set on it. 
So here we set the min length to 2, um, our com max length to 15, uh, confidence, confidence to 0 0.5, and the support is still 0 0.1, which is the default. And we ended up with, instead of 400,000, okay, we ended up with 500,000 rules now because we decreased the confidence. So before the confidence was 0 0.8, now it's 0 0.5. So now we have more association rules, which we're not going to inspect. Because what we want to do is set all of our rules to contain only variables where the response equals 1. All right, so to do that, let's go back to my Word document where I have my code. To do that, we want to list, we only want to retain um, the variables that are not the variable equals to 0. Okay, so actually this should be 15 since we have 15 variables. So we just set the parameters for appearance that specifies which items to keep in the item set. So we set a list. And before we've used this C parentheses C for a list containing these things, but if you specify the list parentheses none equals C parentheses your list of variables, then it will include everything except for what's contained in your little C parentheses contains list of variables. All right, so. Rather than typing everything out by hand, um, you, you're seeing the code here. So let's just walk through it one more time. A priori algorithm, we're, we're calling this MBA for market basket analysis. A priori algorithm, our data set, the parameters that we just looked at, and the appearance, we only want variables that do not equal 0. So we only want variables that equal 1. OK? So let's copy that in to R, press enter, and now, let's see, um, how many item sets do we end up? Now we only have nine rules, so that's pretty few. Let's inspect that. Inspect our MBA, Market Basket Analysis. So these are our nine rules. On the left-hand side, we have these health variables. On the right-hand side, we have these health variables. This is with a confidence of 0 0.5 and a support of 0 0.1. So um, this is good. This is progress. This is much more man manageable to work with. You can see the counts, the number of times this association rule occurred in our data set. This is the lift, which we're not paying attention to. Um, but the confidence, right, is a the likelihood or the probability that the stuff on the left-hand side is occurring with the stuff on the right-hand side. The support is the um, proportion or the frequency of the times that this association rule occurred in our data set. So for example, if you have arthritis, you also probably have high blood pressure. That happened 12% of the time, and the confidence was 0 0.54. And this occurred in 1,145 individuals. So this is good. Um, if we had no, no hypothesis to work from, even though we have a silly fake hypothesis, which is California girls will have better health than California boys, um, if we didn't have that hypothesis, we would continue data mining just like this. But what we actually want to do is set one side of our arrow to, to be the sex variable, so that if you're a girl or you're a boy, your collection of health variables will be associated with your gender. OK, so in order to do that, one other thing is, be before we specify that, um, we're working with a relatively small data set, right? We have almost 10,000 observations, but we only have 15 variables. If you are working with a lot more variables, maybe 100 or something, you would want to specify some memory saving options. So I just have that written here. If you end up working with more variables, you want to set the control. This is like the, you know, the functioning specification. Um, the list, the memory option, you want it to optimize the memory. And load equals false. I can't remember what that means. But anyway, this, this will, this will um, improve your performance if you're working with more health variables. And I have that attached on the rest of the code for this as well. So let's just run that, and I have to change this 
16 to 15. Let's just run that and confirm that you get the same thing. Even if you set some memory optimization um, parameters, you're still going to get the same results. So we still have nine. And they're the same ones. If you scroll up, they're still the same. So just putting on some memory saving options. All right, that might help you in the future. Now what we want to do, these are big chunks of code, so I hope you don't mind if I am if I decide not to type out everything. I'll just walk you through the code, and then we'll copy and paste it. So uh, with our support at 0 0.1, we only got nine responses. But surely there are many more responses than just nine, right? Many more association rules that we could look at. And in fact, the authors of the NHANES paper argued that the MS a priori algorithm was important for setting minimum, multiple minimum support thresholds. So we're going to decrease our support threshold and just take a look at what that is. Everything else here is the same, except I changed the support to 0 0.1. And I'm sorry I'm fixing my, my typos as we're going through this tutorial, but I'm just changing that max len from 16 to 15 because we have 15 variables in our, in our data set. So copy this. This is our market basket analysis with the support decreased to 0 0.01. Now we have 279 rules. All right, so this is where we might do some exploring and some digging. So again, we have our stuff on the left hand of the side, uh, left left hand side of the association rule. Um, these are some things occurring together will likely result in the stuff on the right hand side. All right, and at a support of 0 0.01 and a confidence of 0 0.5, our longest association rule is one, two, three, four variables on the left-hand side um, relating to one variable or being associated with one variable on the right-hand side. And so as you can see, these are some of these are health variables. Here we have one where the sex equals female, sex equals female, sex equals female, a lot of female, but there are also some of sex equals male. Now what we want to do is hone in on only those sex equals female to be the right hand side of our of our association rule. So let's pull our code back up. Let's start with male. So sex equals m and we want to set sex equals m onto the right hand side. So everything else in this code is the same except in the appearance equals list, we've specified RHS, right-hand side, equals sex equals M, in quotes, comma, and then none equals contains all those other variables. So let's take a look at that. And don't worry about this huge chunk of code. Again, the code will be in the description. So now we have 24 association rules. Um, with sex equals M on the right-hand side, support equaling the minimum threshold for support being 0 0.01 and the confidence being 0 0.5. So let's see, the count. The most common or the most frequently occurring association rule for men is having overweight or obesity. So that happened in 30% of the male population of California in 2017. Not the entire population of California, but of our survey sample. The longest item set occurred um, in 265 respondents having high blood pressure, diabetes, and overweight and obesity. Interesting. So what I want to show you now is that it really does matter if you specify left-hand side or right-hand side. And it's a little bit confusing. So let's run the same code except for in place of this right-hand side equals sex equals M. Let's do left-hand side equals sex equals M. So we run that code and we only get, let me, we only get one association rule. And so that's, this is kind of confusing because you would think I'm a male, I'm a female, because I'm this, then however many percent of times, whatever, should be associated with these different health outcomes. But actually, it's not like that. It's more like the individual factor that you're interested in, you place on the right-hand side, and all of the other variables 
go on the left hand side. So if you limit the sex variable to the left hand side, you only get one association rule. So, so there's that. So basically put your sex variable or your variable of interest on the right hand side if you want to have you know, more robust rules and have more data to look through. So that's for male. Let's do this for female as well. So here we have right hand side equals sex equals F, everything else being the same. Um, and I guess it doesn't matter if you set the max length to something to a number greater than the number of variables that you have. But just for consistency, I'm scrolling through and editing as we go. Sorry, this is not that good. Um, but back on track. Right hand side equals sex equals F. OK, so let's look at the association rules for females where the support equals 0 0.01 and the confidence equals 0 0.5. And we get 47 association rules. The most frequent one, the one occurring most often, is that um, females having arthritis. So that occurred almost 14% of the time in our, in our survey responses. The longest item sets occurring um, in only 150 respondents, so about 2% of the time was high blood pressure, asthma, having arthritis, and having overweight and obesity for females. Likewise, having high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, and, um, and overweight or obesity for females. So both of the support on these are 0 0.016, both occurring 150 times. Let's just double check um, by putting sex equals F for female on the left hand side. Let's see what we get. And we get nothing. So when you when you plus when you place the sex variable for female on the left hand side, you get no results. There are no zero rules, no association rules for for that specification. OK, so we're working with the a priori algorithm. We weren't able to work with the MS a priori algorithm. But what we can do is set our support, uh, decrease our support even further to 0 0.001 to see if we can capture some of those more rare health conditions. So starting again with Mayo, um, just going to change that 16 to a 15. So here we've changed the support, right hand side, sex equals M. And we end up with 218 rules. So if we start at the top of the list, we see the first one um, uh, having, what is that, stroke. So having a stroke and being male, again, the most commonly occurring one is this overweight and obesity with being a male, occurring 2,837 times. And then scroll to the bottom of the list. Here we have some comorbidities occurring in only 10 individuals. So high blood pressure, diabetes, have, having arthritis, CVDCRHD, coronary heart disease, maybe, um, heart attack, and overweight and obesity. So in 10 individuals, there were one, two, three, four, five, six common comorbidities. All right. Now let's just double check if we put male on the left hand side with the decreased support, keeping the confidence level the same. So here we have support 0 0.001, confidence 0 0.5, male on the left hand side, we still only get that one association rule. So again, putting sex on the left hand side doesn't really tell us that much. Finally, let's look at um, Sex equals female on the right hand side with the support decreased to 0 0.001. So we run that a priori algorithm and then we inspect it. So scroll to the top. So this is our algorithm. 
This is our inspection. Um, the first one being chronic kidney disease and female, the most frequently occurring one again, which is not surprising that it happens again because it's the same data set, um, but having arthritis and being a female occurring 14% of the time. If we scroll to the bottom, we see that in, so some of the longest item sets for females occurred in only 14, 11, 12, and 13 people. And they occurred really infrequently at less than 1% uh, 1, 1 of the time. So for example, high blood pressure, high blood pressure, asthma, <laughs> high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, asthma, having arthritis, having cancer, and having overweight and obesity. That occurred in only 10 people. Um, high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, having arthritis, uh, chron chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, so bronchitis or emphysema, and overweight and obesity relating to being a female. All right, so you get the point. There are a lot of rules. Um, finally, let's just look at this really, really small support at 0 0.001 with sex equals female on the left-hand side. So we run the a priori algorithm and then this next line to inspect it. Let's go ahead and run that, and we still get we still get zero rules when we set female to the left hand side. All right. So what did we learn from all of this? We learned that um, even though we can't run the MS a priori algorithm, we can still run the a priori algorithm and incrementally decrease the support. When we decrease the support, we cast a wider net to include more rare health conditions that. Um, comorbidities for rare health conditions that occur in a smaller percentage of the population. We have a lot of association rules now that we can go back in and look at, and maybe we can kind of optimize our support and confidence level to be more appropriate for, for what we're interested in. Um, but yeah, so if we didn't have any hypotheses or we were trying to generate hypotheses, this would be a really interesting and important exercise for us to look at these comorbidities as they relate to the respondent's sex. And we would probably find something um, that we wouldn't think to hypothesize of if we didn't do some data mining. So I'm seeing one right here. This variable that they included in the NHANES paper for are you deaf or have you worn a hearing aid is really interesting because in 10, 10, 10 individuals in our in our survey, us 10 survey respondents were deaf, had high blood pressure, had asthma, had arthritis, had bronchitis or emphysema, and were overweight or obese. So it could be that this deaf, like this condition of being deaf is randomly associated with these other conditions. Or it could be, you know, actually related or a causal factor or a result of something else. So that's the benefit of association rule mining. You can look at associations and generate hypotheses from them. So yeah, we ran a bunch of algorithms. We scrolled through a lot of association rules. Um, that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, we're going to actually scroll back through our association rules and kind of compare what we gathered to some more traditional um, methods for just looking at descriptive statistics for comorbidities we're going to look at a histogram, trying to figure out, you know, what's, we, we can see that there are a lot of comorbidities across our survey respondents, but how does that actually compare to the overall population? So that's what we're going to look at next. So I'm not closing out the R session. I'm just going to go ahead and end the video now. So I will see you back here really soon. Bye.